very explosive. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you introduce this man? Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the president of Eternity Network International, the host of Koinonia, known for his love and selfless acts, not just for people, but for the body of Christ as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, this great man of God, this great man of God, <laughs> It's a gift to the body of Christ in Africa and indeed the whole world. It's committed to bringing men to the reality of a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit by inspiring a generation whose sole aim is to love and to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, his voice I call him the sage I call him the oracle I call him God's mouthpiece Enugu as we rise to our feet wherever you are will you receive None other, Apostle Joshua Salma. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for House on the Rock, Enugu. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to celebrate 20 years of your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for all who have come. We thank you for all who are following. Do us good tonight. In the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that your word will come with power. I pray, O oh God, that your word will come with light. In the name of Jesus, that we will never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. While standing, please just help me honor. I call him Bishop Reverend Edward. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Such 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 a humble but mighty man we were having a brief discussion and to know how many pastors came out of this branch who are serving the lord and then to see how humble he is this is how you know successful people god bless you god bless you sir we truly honor you hallelujah i will not cease to honor our father for as long as as I see his face, I will honor him. Please help me honor our father, Bishop Obionu Dogu. Thank you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. And for the sake of time, for every single man of God, great men, great women of God, may the Lord honor you, sirs, in Jesus' name. Please be seated. truly is my joy to be here and I believe that more than ever this meeting is a very prophetic meeting there's a lot happening in your city all at the same time and I believe that this is no coincidence um, 
Just like your man of God said, by the grace of God, I'm here tonight. We have a session in the morning. And then my final session will be in the evening. And um, my heart is filled with so much to share. But then we'll be very fair on tonight so that we're not stretched beyond the time allotted. But then just to give us an idea of what we're going to be discussing, um, we're teaching along the lines of the theme and um, it's important for us to understand that and this is a word church I was I was already blessed just hearing that name because the only way we rise in this kingdom is through our understanding of scripture when you understand scripture you are able to rise it says I went up by revelation Paul speaking Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Um, we're going to be looking at three um, basic teachings for our session. I just felt led in my spirit to just bring them up so we have an idea. Number one, we're going to be looking at Zoe, the mystery of the indwelling spirit. According to 1 John chapter 5, the implication of being partakers of that divine nature. Paul was speaking and he said there is a mystery that God can tabernacle with men. And then, as God grants us grace, we'll be examining Ezekiel 47, the levels and the dimensions of glory that men can host the presence and the glory of God in measures. And for our final session, as God allows, I'll be teaching you something I believe is very powerful, the mystery of the ark. We'll be examining Exodus chapter 25 to understand the Ark of Covenant that was given to Moses. It was a mystery that commanded victory and triumph everywhere it went to. Hallelujah. But as a foundation, um, if we are not able to touch any of this tonight, that's all right. It's, it's a course we are doing, praise God. So you just... You just um, went through the course content. I'm particularly concerned about a, an aspect that has been um, a long forgotten mystery in the body of Christ generally that is responsible for very superior dimensions of God's presence and I hope to be able to teach tonight. It was a desire in the heart of a man called David. I call it the desire of David. Help us, Holy Spirit, and let the Lord be glorified. Amen and amen. For reference, let's start with three scriptures. Psalm 27 and verse 4. Psalm 27 and verse 4. It says, one thing have I desired. This is David expressing his desire. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, how long? All the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. If you can still see it, let's read it one more time. One to read. One thing that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord 
and abide under the shadow of your wings and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord and abide under the shadow of your wings that was his prayer one thing have I desired not the greatness of my kingdom not the greatness of my throne not a name one thing I have desired and that I will seek after to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life scripture number two Psalm 42 the first two verses, Psalm 42, we'll begin our reading from verse 1. Psalm 42, it says, As the deer or the heart panted after the water brooks, in that similitude, my soul longs after you, O God. Verse 2, it says, My soul tested for God for the living God when shall I come and appear before God scripture number three revelations chapter three the revelation of Jesus given to apostle John whilst he was caught up in the isle of Patmos verse 20 revelation chapter three and verse 20 behold Jesus is speaking I stand at the door, he says, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, the result, I will come in to him. I will come in to him and I will sup or eat with him and he with me. Are you ready for one more scripture? John chapter 14, we'll read 41, we'll read 21 and 23. The verse of emphasis being 23. John 14, Jesus again is teaching. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Help me complete that scripture. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode. We will not just visit him. We will make our abode with him. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation, Scripture is full of God's desire to reveal himself to man hallelujah the bible starts as we know from genesis chapter 1 and the bible says in the beginning it says god created the heavens and the earth now you know that that beginning was not the beginning that we know it was not the beginning of our dispensation this we call it eternity past in the beginning god created the heavens he created the earth verse 2 says now the earth was dark void formless and the spirit of god hovered around the face of the deep now from from verse one two three we really didn't understand the object behind all of that recreation as we know now to what end was god doing all that he was doing why did he have to call the light back why did he have to make the sun to divide look look at the meticulous process God saying and seeing, saying and seeing. And the suspense was finally revealed when we get to verse 26. That all of the recreation and everything that he was doing, it was not just for plants, it was not just for animals. In fact, it was not just for himself. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 1, please give it to us verse 26. The Bible says, and God said, having done all of these things, let us 
make man, Adam, dark earth. Let us make this man using a very delicate formula. This man should not be like any other species and any other being. It says, let us make this man, number one, in our image. The image of God is what Satan looked for as Lucifer. Now he says, let us build man in our image. What is our image? Our character. The same spiritual quality that makes God, God. Let us make man in that image. And then, after our likeness. Likeness means the way we function. Two hands, two legs, that he would speak for things to happen. He would move, you know, and so on and so forth. And then the Bible says, and let us design this man such that when we are done with him, he sustains the ability to have dominion. Are we together now? Go to verse 28, please. And then when God had designed this man, Adam, the Bible says, God said unto him, the first thing that man would hear from the lips of God was be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion over this and that and now Adam began to do all of those things God himself expressed his desire not only to visit not only to build not just to express his power but to tabernacle with man isn't it amazing that as beautiful as heaven was and is God didn't seem satisfied with all the worship that happens in heaven. Here and there, all through scripture, we are given little um, privileges to see the activities that happen in heaven. And for every time we've had the opportunity to peep into heaven, all we see is splendor, all we see is excellence, all we see is worship. And yet, in the midst of it, there seems to still be a hunger in the heart of God. There's something he's looking for that is not in heaven. How could God be looking for something that is not found in heaven? Hmm. The beauty of the worship, the four and twenty elders, the creatures in heaven, the dexterity, the order of the angels, the beauty of the throne room, the splendor and the light of heaven. And yet in the midst of that worship, he would have cause to bow his head and say, there is more. There is still something I desire. Please follow carefully. We're dealing with hosting God. And then... When he finally found man, the Bible makes a very fearful statement that every time he would come in the cool of the day, he would come in the cool of the day to find out after giving that man dominion, after ensuring that he builds the habitation of that man himself, he still came to find out. When man fell, the first person who addressed him was that same God himself. Adam, I have come as usual. Where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you you were naked? They began a discussion. And then as a result of the fall of man, please follow carefully. He was banished from the east of the garden and he began to till the ground and live and experiment himself. The Holy Spirit had to leave him. Lost righteousness, lost dominion and began to walk as a mortal carnal man. The administration of death through sin began to find expression in that man. Are we together? And yet God in heaven took responsibility for that man's condition even though he gave him a will. And again, you would hear the Bible say, God speaking, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Never said that to any angel. Never said that to any being in heaven. I have loved you, he says, with an everlasting love. 
I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God's desire to be with man. Usually this is what happens. God will give men instructions from the nation of Israel. We see them do this again and again. And then they would violate his instructions and give themselves over through disobedience to their enemies. Is that true? And then the enemies would oppress them and they would not even not sometimes they would cry on to God sometimes they would not even acknowledge that there is a God in heaven and yet in heaven again you see that restlessness will start God will start searching for a prophet searching for someone to say look just come back he is not ashamed to show how vulnerable he is about this man Satan sinned there is nowhere in the Bible where a discussion came between God and Satan for reconciliation There is no discussion in scripture that the one third of the angels that fell, God said, all right, um, God, I am love. Love gives, love forgives, let's talk. But man, man. Are you learning something now? Yes. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. A time came when Jesus now was to come. It was only in the life of Jesus I saw excitement when you know that the end is disaster. You are coming to die and yet you come with joy. Jesus left heaven and came with joy. And when he was born, listen, look at the rigorous process leaving his throne i hope you know that jesus was not a servant in heaven god himself with joy leaving heaven to come not because of stars not because of feasts not even because of the the earth because of man again he was willing to become a baby and start afresh endure 30 years until the jewish custom will now allow him to be a man and then laboriously go through pain for three years. And he said, if man is the reason, I am willing. Are we together? Joy. Knowing he would come to die. That there was no other way. Man did not beg him and say, please come and die and help us. It was a choice that he made because of his desire to be with man. When you understand this, you will know that it is not God's desire to be distant from man. It's always his desire to reveal himself, his presence, his glory, to tabernacle with man. And so Jesus walked the earth. Watch this. As soon as Jesus started ministry, all he was interested in was still the same man. His first assignment was to look for men. And he said, follow me. Follow me, men. I'm interested in you. I want to make you. His entire 33 and a half years was about men. Not even himself. Men. From crusades to discussions. Even when it was time for Jesus to rest, he would not rest. When he saw a human, he would sit at the well and not feel embarrassed to talk to a woman who was not even understanding him what was it about man that he didn't seem to have the ability to resist man to the point that even when he was on the cross he still did not keep quiet he was talking with men on the cross as soon as he went to hell there was not much discussion with satan according to the pauline epistle he was there, defeated Satan, and was interested in men. The Bible says, Apostle Peter was teaching us, that in hell, he ignored Satan when he collected the keys and went to men, preached the gospel to them, and said, this is why I came, follow me. Men. It's in your Bible. The Bible says, when he resurrected, he came out all saints. Is that true? Who were in Hades, the place of the dead. That they came out with him and filled the streets in Jerusalem. 
Here's how David puts it. What is man? Because I, I suspect there is something in man that man does not even know. So what is man? That you are mindful of him. Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. What is in man? Listen. If, if you hold a checkbook and it looks like a piece of paper. And anytime I'm coming close to it, you react. It tells me there is something about that checkbook that I may not know. Anything that touches man seems to, to get the attention of God. Could it be that there is something in man that man does not even know? What is man that thou art mindful of? Do you know the entire Bible is not just about God alone, but it's about God and his love towards man. Man. When Jesus walked upon the earth, whenever he reveals the Father, he reveals the Father for the sake of man. And then here's what he had to say. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare that place, he said, I will come and take you so that where I am, there you may be also. His desire for oneness his desire to come close to man. So we know for a fact, according to scripture, that God does not pride himself in being distant from man. As great and mighty, mysterious and powerful as God is, his desire still remains not just for man to know him, but that there becomes an 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 intertwining, a living and a dwelling together. And one day, very, very soon, when the trumpet sounds, we are not going to another planet. It's going to take us so that where he is, we will be there for a season. And then to show you how much he loves us, he's about to leave that heaven and come down. And come to stay, not to visit. I saw the old earth and the old heaven pass away. And now he comes to tabernacle with men on earth. While we seek to go to heaven, he's only seeking to keep us there to redress the earth and return with us. That means heaven without you is not my best. I'd rather come to the earth with you. This is God. This is Jesus. You have to understand this. I will tell you why I'm teaching you all of this. The desire of David. David said there is one thing I long for. There is one thing I long for. Not my throne. Not cooperation and loyalty from my citizens. There is one thing that I long for. I want to get to that point where I will behold your face. I will drop my royalty and drop everything. Once I know that I am where you are satisfied so many believers want to experience the reality of the presence the glory the grace the power of God so many preachers so many individuals even cities and territories we have read through scripture and we have seen through modern history that men and women seem to have carried very superior dimensions of God's presence. And with the reality of that presence, many of them operated like gods literally upon the earth. In signs and wonders, unusual manifestations of God's power and grace. God walking, dwelling, living in men. The history of the church in Nigeria is full of all kinds and different levels of the moves of God. Men and women who walked upon this earth did mighty and terrible things because of dimensions of God that they carry. Just a few days ago, we had Yonggi Cho finally transited to join the cloud of witnesses. This was the man who was used mightily, marvelously, mightily just help those under the anointing see 
So, there is, please look up, there is a way an individual, there is a possibility that the reality of the presence, the power, the grace of God, that new heaven and new earth can happen in a man today. That God, the reality of the full import of God's presence and power can dwell bodily in a man. Men can carry God. And that's the reason why I told you that we're going to look at all of this because there is a dimension of God that comes through the administration of Zoe, eternal life. But it does not stop there because every believer through the ministry of the holy spirit has that indwelling presence but there are dimensions this is what ezekiel 30, 47 was teaching us that just because water is flowing does not mean it's enough to create that effect there are different levels it is still the same river flowing from the same location and i began to search I began to study diligently what were the factors responsible for this manifestation, this godlike power that certain believers, certain humans seem to exhibit. There are men upon the earth, and there have been men from scripture who manifested certain realities that are not affordable in the world of ordinary men. The possibilities that came from their lives, it was clear that they were not alone. And they exhibited godlike qualities. The Bible says men whom the earth was not worthy of. He archives them in Hebrews 11. And yet he says that they without us will not be perfect. That means there is still another one coming. There is another episode coming. Once upon a time an apostle, a viper beat him. And they said, you must be a sinner. The gods have come to judge you. And not narrowly. He should die immediately. And Paul said, no, that's all right. There is something that we carry. Now, to our generation, this thing sounds like parables. But it is true. They called the apostles Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. Men who were not Christians. They looked at them and said, we don't know what you are. But one thing we know that you are not is you are not human. You are not a pure human. You are a human plus something. And they were right. The Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation is not waiting for everybody. Mm -mm. It's not even waiting for humans. It said it's waiting for God to reveal. I think there's a version that says so. That the earnest expectation of creation, King James says, um, is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. One version says, is waiting for God to reveal those who his sons truly are. Are we together? There is an implication to our oneness with God. But if we do not understand the principles that govern hosting these superior dimensions of God's presence and glory, we will keep speaking, we will keep confessing, but the reality of that divine life, the reality of that oneness may never find expression in us. And this is what brings glory to the name of the Lord, that all and sundry will look at you, and even though they are seeing a man, what is coming out cannot be produced by men. When Jesus walked upon the earth, they knew him as a young Nazarene, Mary's son, Joseph's son. At age 12, he was a diligent student. He did not go to the temple to study the Bible alone. He had classmates. And for the next 18 years, we do not hear of him again. The next time he comes, a prophet is baptizing people to search for this mysterious one who is God living among men. Then he sees Jesus, and here's what he says. Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. He baptized Jesus, and the Bible says the heavens opened, and the Holy Ghost came upon him. Watch this now. Until then, 
he was Jesus, the son of Mary. Jesus, the word that had become flesh. But the Holy Spirit came, rested upon him, and he became the Christ of God. And from that time, he was led of the wilderness to be tempted of the devil in Matthew chapter 4. And then the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And they did not see the Nazarene ever again. The next person they saw was a sign and a wonder. One level of God-like manifestations. The only person they could relate to the results of Jesus was God. The God that their fathers told them about. He went and he saw a woman who was oppressed with fever, Peter's mother-in-law. And he merely picked her and said, look, go and cook for us. As simple as that. Mighty manifestations of power. Five loaves, two fish. He gave thanks. He said, don't worry, heaven is here. Go ahead and share it. Water that he turned to wine. We sing about it, but if it happens here now, we are going to run away. Is that true? How about the widow at Nain? Going to bury her son. You see the kind of wicked spirit that was oppressing that woman? All the men in her life were dying. Her husband dead, her only son dead. She was on his way to bury him and Jesus said, no, not so. Come. What is going on here? And he merely picks the boy. My God, the resurrection and the life. If Jesus came to your house, you would just begin to rejoice. You didn't have to tell him your issues. If Jesus stepped into your house, what a joy. And here's what he said, as my father sent me, with the same equipping, with the same assignment, even so, send are you. And today we have about 2.6 billion professing Christians on earth. And the earth still looks like the devil is in control. I'm stretching you a bit for a reason. Africa being the most religious of all the continents, the most spiritual, vocally professing Jesus. We believe in him. We sing about him. But there's almost nothing like him manifesting in and through us. To the point that we are even afraid of it. We hope it will happen. But if it does happen, the results show that we are not even prepared to receive that dimension, that God-like manifestation. Are we still together? Please help the person who begins to run now. I just saw two people in the spirit. The power of God is coming on two people and literally like the grace, I'm seeing a yoke of delay just going like that. This is what... I started saying, please help them. We'll have time to preach. This is, um, I hope, am, am I fine? Okay, praise the Lord. So two people, I just saw that. We'll still continue our teaching for the power of God. Just help them, whether inside any of the overflows. I just saw that light because that, you see, this is a conference. It's not just something we keep talking about. It will be a shame if all we do is just talk about this and share the grace and go. No, we didn't just come for a lecture we came again to remind the devil that not everyone has given up on this project. There is a generation of people who believe that they will stand and walk in power. Praise the Lord. Please, when you see those two people, I want to help. You don't have to bring them out. Just help them. That light, I just saw them running by the Spirit, is a yoke of delay that God is breaking out of their lives. You know that delay is real. It can impede people, it can limit people, and stop them from manifesting the fullness of their potentials in Christ. Are we still following? Are we still together? So God desires, God desires to reveal himself to man. But he also desires that man will carry such dimension of his glory. John chapter 15 and verse 8, here's what he says. He said, hearing... Is our father glorified? Herein is our father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. When ye bear much fruit, when ye bear much fruit, 
when ye bear much fruit i'm seeing a lady i hope i hope i'm not i pray that i don't get interrupted but i'm seeing a lady there's such power of the holy spirit coming upon her she's been preparing her heart and god has told you you are entering a new season and that that season you're going to begin to experience the glory of God in a very, very remarkable and unique dimension. This is what the Lord is asking me to tell you. The Lord is saying a season is changing for you, changing for you, and you are going to begin to carry levels of the power of the Holy Spirit. There are things you could not do before, but that in this conference you are accessing grace. Grace is coming to you from heaven. This word is for a lady, I'm saying, of course, when God speaks to one, he speaks to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Madam, the woman wearing green, please stand up. Lift your hands. I cast that spirit right now. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the spirit of the living God that everything that oppresses you and will not let you and your family go free, I declare right now, be delivered, be free now, and be free forever. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you and in the name of Jesus, let oppression come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Men can carry God. I really believe that one of the things that God is doing in this conference is just activating. I, I sense that this church has been through a season of hunger and preparation. You can see that. There, is, there are hearts that are already very, very open and prepared. I assure you one thing, your pastor did not speak over you for nothing. It was a word from the Lord. It was a word from the Lord. It was a word from the Lord. This gentleman wearing red with your hand on your face, stand up, my friend. The Lord is saying, I shall announce to you, you are stepping into a new season of grace. I don't know him, but in the name of Jesus Christ, such power... The Lord himself is shifting you into a new season. It will not be like before, the Lord is saying. I am bringing you into a new season. Into a new season. Am I wasting your time tonight? To a new season. There is a gentleman and a lady. This is a choir. These people standing. A gentleman and a lady. The Lord is bringing restoration to your family. I just saw light and the Lord is speaking to me. He's bringing restoration. I decree and declare whatever it has, has been with your family. The Lord sent me here by the spirit of the living God and I stretch my hands towards you. I declare restoration for you and for your family. Two of you, the power of God is coming upon you and this will be the beginning of a new season. A gentleman and a lady. A gentleman and a lady. This is what God is showing me. I decree and declare, let there be restoration for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you pray in the Spirit in one minute, everywhere, outside, inside? Just pray, whether you are seated, just pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please sit down. We'll continue our teaching. I just saw light coming on a man. You are a pastor. I don't know where that man is, but I just saw light coming on him. Please let me just, it's, it's not good to disobey the Holy Spirit in a meeting like this. Kalis Kadibra, just be sensitive. I tell you, there is such glory 
this is, listen, one of the things that you'll be learning in this conference is that men can carry their climate everywhere. You can, you can stay with God and carry your spiritual climate. May God use you, my dear, this lady, the one putting her hand, yes, this one looking at me, stand up. Not you, the one at your back. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God use you in a way that you have never experienced. May my God use you in a way that you have never experienced. May God use you. There is a pastor. I will continue, but I'm seeing there is a pastor. I'm seeing an impartation. You came here, there is, um, you know, just that strong impartation. People have come here with hunger, genuine hunger, genuine hunger of the spirit. The power of God is coming on that man. I don't know where you are. You are a man of God, but such glory. Your ministry is about to shift in the name of Jesus. It's going to be a new season for your ministry. You will see signs and wonders in a way that you will marvel and wonder. Is he a pastor, this man? Is that man a pastor? In this church? Where are you coming from, sir? I don't have a church, but I worship here. Okay, you worship here, but you're a pastor. You believe in the healing anointing? Look at me, sir. Lift your hands. Even as God has revealed to me, I pray for you. Look at me. May that grace come upon you. Take that fire right now. I stretch my hands. That glory is coming upon you. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. Take that fire. Let it shift you to a new level. And from you, just when you are where you are standing, the road down, straight, there is the power of God is coming on someone. On this same road, just right down. In the name of Jesus, this is what I saw in my vision. Where this man is standing, the row, right down. The power of God is coming on someone. I don't know why God does these things. Mine is just to obey. But sir, you will never be the same. I assure you, you are drinking of a very, very, very ancient oil. Just this row, down. The power of God is touching someone. From where this man is, you can look at the road down. In the name of Jesus. May you never be the same. That oil from heaven is coming upon you and is shifting you. Shifting you supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone at the back, I'm seeing that grace for prophecy. The grace for the prophetic is coming on someone. Right now at the back. Very marvelous grace. God has been using you in a way. But even you, you have not really seen that it's a call. But tonight God is confirming to you that it's a call. It's a marvelous call. All your dealings in the secret place, your times of prayer, your times of fasting with the Spirit, God is confirming to you that this is a call by the Spirit. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. He will not suffer my food to be moved. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Sit down. So we have established the fact that God seeks for that union. He seeks to tabernacle with man. All through scripture, we see his, his intention made known to man that he does not just desire to visit man. He desires to tabernacle with man. But you see, God is a God of systems and is a God of principles. 
So in as much as he's a God of love, he has exalted his word even above his name. That means he's constrained by the principles of his word. That is the reason why as powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. He had to go through the protocol that allows for the remission of sin. And the law is that without the shedding of blood, he did not just look at man and say, man, I am God, I created you. Sin, go out of man like you cast a demon. He had to submit himself. It took 33 and a half years in the flesh for man's sin to come out of him based on due process. From his arrival to the earth, to his ascension, to offer his blood upon that tabernacle in heaven, 33 and a half years thereabout for this deal, this issue of sin to be done with in man. So God is a God of principles. He will not violate his principles. And I want to share with you just for tonight very briefly just one key that can help a man to host very superior dimensions of God and will pray. I call it the desire of David. Second Chronicles, please, chapter 6. Second Chronicles, chapter 6. A verse of emphasis will be verse 7. Second Chronicles, chapter 6. Please give it to us so that we we'll hurry up. Now, this is Solomon. In fact, let's start from verse 1. This is Solomon about to dedicate the temple in Jerusalem. I'll back up a bit and give you a little context. Then said Solomon, the Lord had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. We're reading down to verse 7. But I have built a house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling. How long? Forever. The key word, I have built. I have built. It did not just appear. I have built a house of habitation for thee. My intention is that it will be a place for your presence to dwell forever. Next verse. The king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. Verse 4. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake unto his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there forever. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people, Israel. Verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. Verse 7. Now, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Bible says that in doing so, it was a good thing. Are we together? Now let's go and see what happened with David. This is Solomon the son. Having built the temple, he's dedicating it now to the Lord. And he makes reference to the motivation that led to that construction. Are we together? Let's go to second Second Samuel 7. Second Samuel 7. Let's start from verse 1. The first instruction is from verse 1. It came to pass when the king sat in his house. Who is the king? King David. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Now please look up. Why does the Bible go all the way to tell you the state of this man? It tells you that at the time this man began to think about God. He was not thinking about God because he had problems. God, keep, please keep verse 1 for us. God had given him rest round about. And yet that was the time he remembered God. When God gave his son rest round about, he forgot God until he regretted and documented his regret in Ecclesiastes. 
Are we together now? God gave David rest round about. Had no battles. Had no need. And yet David said it was never about the battles. It was never about the victory. It was never about rest. It was about my desire for you. Because if it was about battles, I have used you to triumph. If it was about prosperity, neighboring kings have brought their, their, their bounty and their gold and everything. I am comfortable. I may not need you again. And David said, even though you have given me rest round about, you still remain my obsession. Next verse. Verse 2. Be patient with the reading. We'll continue now. The king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. What, what a desire. He's saying, look, as I'm sitting down right now, I'm not thinking about my throne. I'm not thinking about succession. Why would I sit down in this beautiful palace and I know that the ark of God, the same ark that brought me victory, the ark that was a representation of the presence of God, is still kept somewhere with curtains. Verse 3. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart. For the Lord is with you. There is something in your heart, even as a successful man, you are concerned about the fact that uh, that desire and that longing in your heart, the longing that was there whilst you were a shepherd, even in the midst of all the achievements now, what else do you need? You are king. Enemies have been defeated. Your kingdom is experiencing peace. But David said, I still have a desire. There is a desire in my heart. My desire was never fame. My desire was never just to use God and find rest. I have found the rest. And yet, Lord, you had rest in heaven too, round about. And yet your heart was on me. Now you have given me rest. My heart is still on you. Desire. Pay attention. Next verse. Are we still following? Verse 4. It came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build a house for me to dwell in? That means God was watching from heaven the contemplation of a man's heart. And he was saying, God, I can't sleep. I'm a king. I have everything. But I need to be able to build you a place even in my lifetime. And God was revealing to a prophet and said, look the desire of a man who loves me. Verse 6. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Next verse. Be patient. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel. Right? It says, with any of the tribes of Israel whom I have commanded, feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? Verse 8. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from a sheep coat. God is giving him the history. From following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest. We'll deal with this during our final session. And have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. And have made thee a great name. Like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. I will plant them and that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies also, the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. We're reading to 18. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, 
I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Look what is happening to him. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Uh -huh. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. I will put away before thee, whom I will put away, whom I put away before thee, and thy house and thy kingdom, listen carefully, shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. The last verse. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me thus far? Look up, please. David dwelt in peace, free from war, free from lack, and yet David had a desire. The desire was that God would find a resting place, that God would find a place to tabernacle in. And even when God told him, David, I've seen your desire, but you have shed too much blood. I may not allow you to be the one to build. He was not offended. He said, no problem. I will get the raw materials and keep. Let it be that someone who came out of me still builds that house for God. Can I tell you this? The number one factor that controls the manifestation of the hand and the presence of God to come and tabernacle with a man as a covenant is the heart factor. The heart condition of a man. Please pay attention. The heart condition of a man, according to scripture and in my experience, is the greatest determinant of the presence, the power, the grace of God. You've heard me say it again and again. We have taught that the secret to power the secret to the glory of God is just prayer and fasting and that is wonderful if your heart has been worked on. Every other thing in this kingdom finds its place when your heart condition is right. Can I tell you this? No matter the spiritual activity you are involved with, if this heart factor, if your desire has not been screened and edited, you may never hold certain dimensions of God's presence and power. Herein lies the frustration of many people who are actively engaging in spiritual activities, but wonder why in spite of everything that I do, I don't seem to be able to carry the level of glory that I desire. Can I tell you this? You don't know if you truly love God when you have needs. You know if you truly love God when your needs are met. That's why the Bible put that scripture there. David had found rest. Do you know what happens to a human when he finds rest? I understand you need God because you need to build. I understand your children are still in school and you need school fees. But there is something about the state of a man's heart when he has no need again. David... Tonight, our assignment is to obtain grace from God. That impartation of the desire of David, it must come upon your heart that you can look at wealth and riches. You have risen to the highest level in your profession and yet you can come before him and say, there is still a desire, oh God. The same desire that was in my heart before I started is the same desire in my heart now. Please do not assume you understand what I'm saying. As simple as this is, if it is the God of heaven you want to walk with, you want to carry power and grace and presence, trusted with influence over nations and territories, beyond fasting, beyond praying, beyond spiritual activities, the heart of man, the greatest factor that invites God to tabernacle with man is his heart. 
search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Listen, the desire of David is one that has inspired me and changed my life. Why would a king who had found rest round about sit down and his contempt? If I were David, my contemplation would not be God, though. May God forgive me, but who knows? Do you know what it means to find rest round about? You have estates. You have houses all over the world. You have accolades to your name. You have children who are obedient. Succession is in place. What do I need you for again? David said, I have a desire. Prophet Nathan, you are a prophet. Help me tell God I will not rest till I find a place for him in my lifetime. Lord, I will not rest till everything you have given me praise you. Till everything you have given me reveals Jesus. It, do you know every time God sees men who are ready to give all to prove him how much they love him, they attract his attention immediately. Now you will understand John 14, 21. Please give it to us. John chapter 14 and verse 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. If you can see it and it's projected, can you read for me? Ready? Read, please. Let's, let's do 23. Let's do 23. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Love, love, love. If a man loves me and keeps my word, my father will love him and we will come. We will come and make our abode in his ministry, in his family, in his life, in his destiny. You will become a walking, living ark carrying the presence of God everywhere you go. Then your life becomes a sign. Your life becomes a wonder. First to you and then to everyone who cares to see. Can I tell you this? The secret behind the exploits of men, the secret behind the seeming greatness you see is that covenant. God has found hearts that in life and in death only live to glorify him you may have heard my story many years ago the Lord spoke to me and said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you are we together the heart condition in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, it has become an anthem in my life. A formula to host God. Number one, my son. Proverbs 23, 26. It says, my son. What is he asking you to give him? Not your offering. Not your singing. Uh-uh. Leave that one first. Not your prophetic acumen. Not your ministry. You can give God every other thing. But if your heart is not part of it, you've not given him anything. The tray that carries every other gift you carry is your heart. Imagine that you want to give a president something or a governor something. and Maybe water and you just pick it and throw it at him. That's not a gift. The tray that carries everything and makes everything you present before God honorable is your heart. Are we together now? We're going to pray. Mark 14. A very instructive story. Mark chapter 14. We'll start our reading from verse 1, please. The Bible says, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And then all of this happened. The, the chief priests, they sought to put him to death. Verse 2. 
Mark chapter 14. Okay, next verse. I hope, that's, I hope I got that right. Yes. Verse 3. Watch this. The Bible says, And being in Bethany, please look up, in the house of Simon the leper, he sat to eat, and a woman came. The Bible says that she had an alabaster box. Everybody, please look up. An alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard. Then the Bible says it was very precious. And the Bible says she broke the box. Another synoptic account will tell you it was worth one year's wages. A salary of one year. Broke the box and poured it on his head. And to the point that some had an indignation within themselves and they said, why was this a waste? That means every time you see this desire, you will be tempted to think it's a waste of time, a waste of life. They called an expression of hunger and desire a waste. What is this God thing that you are acting as if you didn't go to school? What is this God thing you are acting as if you are a failure? You already have results. Man of God, God has established you in ministry. What is this passion and rolling on the ground before God again? Remember the joy that was in the heart of David when the ark was being restored. He was dancing and dancing and Saul's daughter looked at him and said, shame on you. There are ethics to royalty. You are violating the ethics of royalty. He said, I am dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. I have preached this message for as long as I can remember. Yet, surprisingly, people listen, but they never truly get it. That the real secret to power with God, to grace from on high, more than spiritual activities, is when a man gets to a point where you have the desire of David. There is a reason why God made the covenants that he made with David. The heart factor. Vetting your heart to find out do you still have a desire to see him lifted? To see him glorified? To see him revealed? Do you have a desire for his presence? Most people want power. Most people want miracles. Most people want fame. Hello? Don't, don't feel insulted. Most people. I keep saying it again and again. Most people. Imagine with me, please. Um, one of these protocols. Please come. Come, sir. Let me use you. Look at this fine gentleman standing here. Imagine with me for a moment that this man comes to me. He's been calling me from morning till evening. Apostle, I want to see you. And I tell him I'm busy. And he says, please, I have to see you. It's a matter of life and death. And then as soon as he comes to me, he's not looking at me. All he wants is my shoe. All that call for my shoe. I want to snap your shoe so I look for the kind. I want to snap your watch and I'm standing in shock wondering you did not sleep all through the night calling me now that you have my attention what are you looking at I say look at me and he says no no it's not about your face I was just calling you because I was told that there is a material that you wear that is beautiful Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. For by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you suffer.
carried her alabaster box. She broke it. I can waste it if it is before you. And he looked at her heart and said, everywhere the gospel is preached, even though this woman was not ordained into ministry, you cannot ignore her because she has communicated her love. Can I tell you something I know about God? There are certain dimensions in God that only genuine lovers, those whose hearts have been purged sincerely to love him, not for things. I know we are humans. We need things to be. Some of you here are sick. Some of you came expecting increases of all sorts. But can I tell you sincerely, there are no gimmicks with God. If he cannot find himself in your heart, your heart must reflect his face back to him as a mirror. Otherwise, he does not trust what is there. Don't say I love the Lord. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? Do you love me more than power? More than signs and wonders? If I tell you to quit ministry now, will you still love me? If I tell you you may never drive a car in your life again, will you still love me? Or is the rolling just because you had a dream and you saw a car? There's nothing wrong with it. But you see, the prayer that God purifies your motif is a real prayer. A genuine prayer. We have a generation of people who love God today and in a heartbeat when God gives them rest round about. Why should I come to church again? I've gotten what I'm looking for. Why should I come to church again? I'm now a politician. I'm busy traveling around. I'm now a leader. I'm too busy. I, I will follow online one day. And God says, I knew it. See, God reminded David and said, let me let you know that I've not forgotten while you were a shepherd boy. Now you are king. I have seen the consistency of your desire. Every other thing changed except your desire. Listen, if you want God to bless you, change every other thing except that desire. Change cars, that's all right. Change buildings, that's all right. Change clothes, that's all right. Change approach to ministry, that's all right. But never allow that desire to die. The same desire as a shepherd boy. The same desire as a king. I like to see your glory revealed. Can I tell you this? If I have any fear in my life at all, it's not losing ministry. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing power. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing my name or what you call reputation. If I have any fear in my life, it's not untimely death. If I have any fear in my life, it's to get to a point where that presence, where my heart condition, my heart now exalts something above God. You can exalt prayer and fasting above God. You can exalt Bible study above God. The Bible talks about God, but God is a person. You can even exalt heaven above God. You can exalt breakthrough above God. My son, give me power. You want to host God? This is the secret. Most of my encounters, I tell you, they did not come because of any effort per se on my own part. There is one thing I can tell you. I sincerely and truly love the Lord. And I desire for his name to be lifted and his glory to be revealed. If ever I pray for power, it's not to make a name. It's so that God can give me the privilege and the opportunity to be an extension of him to people. Everything starts and ends with him. I love, I love. I love your presence. 
If I can get you to a point this night where you are willing to lay down all of the things that make you look like you love God, but in truth, there is an agenda that is locked up. Lord, I am tired of delay. There are yokes in our family. So they say, if I fast, I get your power. Oh yeah, let me fast. There's nothing wrong with that in itself. But if that is what leads you, he will tell you, okay, take, this is what you want. And most people will walk away from him. When David had found rest round about, he still had a desire. Lord, I cannot be sitting here and not build you a house. I know that you are God. You sit in heaven. The earth is your footstool. Yet, give me the privilege of bringing you close to find a place in my life that in life and in death you make up your mind that this thing is not just about church this is not just about Christianity I genuinely love you and no matter what you give me no matter where I go my ultimate desire will be to see your glory revealed to see your power revealed in me and then through me to my world if that becomes your desire you have passed the first test that can truly grant a man access to host god very superior dimensions of god otherwise we will just wrap up a conference you will receive miracles you will receive many things and recycle your frustration back to another one year seeking for something that only the size of God can feel. God put a realm called eternity in the hearts of man and only his size can feel it. A car cannot feel it. Degrees cannot feel it. That is the reason why people become successful and still commit suicide and kill themselves. Nothing wrong with success. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen success till God has your heart. You will lay up gold as dust. You will not even know what to do with it. God will take the prayer request of many and give you as a gift. I made up my mind. It was a vow and a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if there is anything, whether ministry, power, if it has the ability to make me lose that presence, if it has the ability, I rather, I rather not be known in my lifetime. And yet my love and my passion for him, my desire to see him revealed remains unchanged. Heaven for me is him being with me. Heaven is not when I fly through the skies. No, if he's not there, I don't want. If he changes his location to hell, then may I never go to heaven again. It is not about the location, it's about the person. It's not about the throne, it's him who sits on the throne. If the throne is empty, what should I do there? I have no business with the throne. You have to understand this. If he's not in the church, may I never have anything to do with church. If he's not in ministry, may I have any, not, never not have anything to do with ministry. If he's not in my prosperity, may I have nothing to do with it. He becomes the epicenter of my pursuit that I desire him more than life. And he says, this is for me. Let's go to the next level. Can I be sincere with you? I apologize if I sound harsh, but many of us, I can tell you the reason why you are unable. It's not because the devil is so powerful. It's because there is, there is a corruption in the sincerity of our heart. This heart thing. You can fast for 40 days and from day one, the heart is already corrupted. You will enjoy the mercy of God. But I tell you, if it is heaven you want to host.
You've heard me say it in my teachings till today. When I go before God, sir, I don't go before him as Apostle Joshua Selman. Nonsense. Apostle Joshua Selman. It's men that call me Apostle. Oh. Lord, your boy is still here. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me. Here's the part of the song I love. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me want to host God you must love him you must desire to see him glorified not self not ambition Jesus revealed Jesus glorified And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice. With our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love. Oh, oh, we just tell them we love you. Can I tell you sincerely? Please listen to me. I know some of you are crying. It's a very simple message tonight. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few extremely great people, believers, whether in business, in government, in ministry. And most times when I sit down with them, sincerely by God there is nothing in itself that is exceptional you will look for the wow factor and not find it all your eyes will see is the, the plethora of limitations yet the results remain undeniable the key is that when God comes please anyone come when your heart becomes genuinely right with God and he comes to hold you and say, let's go. Your life becomes a wonder. Please listen to me. You will be seeing a mountain and come close and not see it again. Because there is a hand that picks that mountain. And men cannot see the hand. So they think it's your hand that lifted it. When God decides to come and stay with a man. Moses understood this. He said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence, we still have our weapons of war. Don't let us depart from here. We'll only embarrass ourselves. How will they know that we are different? He said, my presence will go with you. Not my presence will visit you. Moses knew it. My presence will go with you. And I, by that presence, 
David said, cast me not away from your presence. Cast me out of the throne, I agree. But cast me not away from your presence. It says, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Can I tell you this? Please look at me. If you lose money and you still have him, you did not lose. If you lose ministry and you still have him, sincerely, you did not lose. But no matter what else you have, if he's not there, you lost, oh, you lost. It's only a matter of time you will know that his presence is what controls everything. I have come tonight to help you understand the spiritual protocol that governs hosting God. And one of it tonight is this heart condition that I call the desire of David. I desire you more than things. I desire you more than rest. I desire you more than money. Can I be sincere with you? This is the grace and one of the mysteries that has kept your precious pastor, the man of God, 20 years with all that has happened. I sat back there and while I was watching, I said, this is my message. When you see results that humans cannot produce, you know that God was involved in it. And I am telling you that you don't, you don't, it's not a parliament that calls him to come. You don't vote him to come. Your heart condition is the magnet that draws his presence to you. There are magnets that are weak. They may not be able to draw much, but there are magnets that are powerful. They can lift cars. You can use them and lift cars. Your heart is that magnet. When you love the Lord, you can sit down and an anointing will leave a conference somewhere and come and meet you in your room. While you are there saying, Lord, I may not have all it takes to serve your purposes, but if for any reason you can find a vessel in me, I am available. And that anointing will leave a conference and come and meet you in your room. Some of you are crying because God has been showing you this message in dreams. You have not been understanding it. God is saying, it's not that I cannot lift you. It's not that I cannot open a door for you but your heart condition. Many times I restrict my blessings to preserve you because as it is, if you find rest in this condition, you may not even be a Christian again. Have you not seen people who were workers in church and God just lifted them, they went abroad and they came back like demons? House on the rock, Enugu, one more time, the Lord is speaking to you. Don't just lift your hands, lift your heart. Lift your heart. That you can give him your heart and say, Lord, from today, you are my obsession. Blessing or no blessing. Lifting or no lifting. I will teach my children your ways. Even when I sit on the throne, I will never forget you. You have become my obsession. As simple and childlike as this is. And he comes to you in power and will invest levels of his presence upon your life that you will be surprised. You will watch doors open. Brothers and sisters, you will see God do things in your life that you will marvel and wonder. People will look at you and they cannot add up where the result is coming from. But then it never stops happening because there is divine presence. You have captured levels and dimensions of God. Please don't miss tomorrow's sessions. When I found this secret, I said I will never let it go. My heart, my heart, my heart, more than my prayer, more than my preaching, my heart, my heart, my heart. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than ministry. 
I'm not serving and loving you and desiring to see your kingdom come just because I'm succeeding in ministry. Even if I were failing, my passion would not, be, would not change. Change everything in your life, but leave that desire. Leave it there. Leave it there. Don't replace it with things. Don't replace it with titles. Don't let age fade the desire away. Are we blessed? Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you are interested, I stand at the door of your heart. That's the part I'm interested in. I'm knocking. What is it doing at the door of your heart? If you choose, you can open the door and let me find space. But if you think your heart is full and you are too busy, I am patient, I can let you be. But you can open that door and I can come in and you shut that door and I will eat with you. He was talking to John. John the Revelator was archiving what he was telling the seven churches. Behold! He was not talking to seven unbelievers. He was talking to seven churches. I am still looking for your heart. It's not new birth. This is not giving your life to Jesus. He's talking about a deeper and a richer experience. Apostle, but I've been born again. That's not what I'm talking about. He's still standing at the door. We're going to spend 10 minutes praying. Please don't be distracted. And the prayer is a prayer of surrender. Lord, impart upon me the desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. According to Psalm 27. Please give us Psalm 27 and verse 4. As we pray. All the overflows outside following online. We are about to pray. One thing have I desired. You have desired many things, but leave all those desires. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, and to behold you all the days of your life. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice, cry to the Lord. This is you and Jesus for the next five, ten minutes. You and Jesus, your maker, the one whose presence you want to see manifest in your life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. House on the rock, Enugu. Enugu state. Pray for the desire of David. One thing have I desired. Are you praying? Please pray. Don't be tired. Take it serious. Oh, I desire you. I desire you. I desire you. The fullness of your presence and your glory in my life. Someone is praying. Nothing can take your place in my life. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Dethrone every idol. Idols of achievement. Idols of vain desires.
Hallelujah. Please look at me. There are people today who threaten pastors and men of God and tell them if God does not answer my prayer, I will stop being a worker in this church. If God does not answer my prayer, I've given God, I've been a worker for one year. Can I tell you the truth? Do not make the mistake of the workers in the parable that Jesus gave. The Bible talks about a parable of the owner of a vine and the workers. I just felt in my spirit to say this. There are many people whose Christianity is conditional. While it is true that there is a covenant of service, that when you serve the Lord, he will bless. But can I tell you this? You must love him more than that. I've been sweeping the house of God and nothing is changing. I'm going. And God says, that was it? Was that the motivation? Hallelujah. When your passion, your love, your drive, nothing can take that place. When you are alone with God, you remind yourself again, he's the object of my obsession. Lord, you have helped me, you have shown me mercy. But regardless what happens to me, good or bad, one thing for sure is I may change every other thing but not you, not my love, not my passion. I will die loving you, die serving you, die living for you. These things, we are more than conquerors on account of that love and that passion, that desire. Please purify your desire. Purify your motives. Why do you seek him? They sought him because they were hungry. As soon as he fed them with 5,000, with, with five loaves and two fish, all of them threw the excesses and went away. And he said, go and gather the crumbs. Twelve baskets. They wasted it. We've used you and we've dumped you. We're on our way going. And he looked at the disciples. He said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? We didn't just come. For, we, who, whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. And he turned them eventually to apostles of the Lamb. And some, even when they ran away, they came back repenting with brokenness. Peter said, depart from me. I am a sinner. Simon Barjona, he said, John 21, lovest thou more than me more than this? He said, yes, feed my lamb. Then feed my sheep. Then feed my sheep. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Can I tell you sincerely, I stand before the God of heaven. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender to prove my love for Jesus, my passion for him. I love him more than that. And my assignment tonight is to impart upon you that desire of David. I don't know how God did it in my life, oh, but it's my prayer that what he did to me, let it happen for someone in this place this night. In the name of Jesus, that no amount of money, no amount of lifting will ever make God look like a nuisance in your life. That you will not just carry him like an extra luggage. That divine presence, you will love the presence of Jesus more than power more than ministry if that happens to you then you will also get the blessing of david don't claim the blessing of david the blessing of david is dominion to find someone to establish his kingdom today when you look at israel the symbol of their flag is the star of david not the star of abraham no, the star of David. The star of David. Listen to me. It was on the strength of this that I started having encounters. It was not just fasting and prayer. 
Many of the encounters I've had today that have changed my life, it was God coming to me. And it has not ended coming to me. My son, let me open this to you. You can open this Bible and search and there are things you will never see until God comes to you. He brings them. There are things that are not studied. You are, he comes and brings you into that body of truth. You know, it's easy for men of God to want to take pride in things like this to make it look as though it's our doing. It's not true. There are some things that only God, God comes to pick you. Signs and wonders. This grace for signs and wonders that you see. Brothers and sisters, it did not, I don't think I would have had the strength and the stamina to go through it and get it that way. With the sincerity of my heart, loving Jesus. And here he comes again. He promised that if you love him and you mean business with him, you will find him. You can find God and you can host him. And a generation can know that you carry him. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. That every lukewarmness, please just help those under the anointing. And everything that has stolen his love, stolen your passion. Some of you, when you started with God, you were not like this. But right now, you have thrown everything that is God in your life. Just the routine of church. Sunday, in and out. But your heart is no longer with him. He's speaking to you seriously. There is need for that restoration. Because in this end time, there are mighty things and marvelous things that God is doing. In men and through men to the nations. But he needs people who love him sincerely. Please look at me. I just sense in my heart to use this opportunity and make an altar call. Can I do that? I'm going to make a very serious altar call right now before I pray. Within this auditorium and all the overflows, there are people whilst you were hearing me speak, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you. And say it is time to make things right with Jesus. Now I, I can't force you. You are the one. You can sit down and share the grace and go back. But this conference was so put by your man of God. Because the Lord is giving someone an opportunity. To restore that love and that fire. For some of you, you've been around the things of church. But you have never truly taken God seriously. I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, those outside you may not, maybe you may just move to your screens outside for the sake of space. But those within here, if you belong to that category as I count one to five, honorably, I'd like you to run and come and stand here. One, run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus. Lord, I'm tired of this. Give me a new beginning. And for all of us who are standing, please don't look at them. Just be praying. Talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Two. Are you coming to Jesus? Give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. Genuine relationship. Three. Someone is running to Jesus. Don't be distracted. The few minutes that we have, don't waste it. These are moments of destiny. If there's no space, just stand at the aisles while we pray. Come to him. Come to him. Four. One more count and we're done. If you're still sitting, please rush and join them. Here at this conference, 
After 20 years, God is opening a door for you. Hallelujah. Now, in Jesus' name, please listen to me. Some of you here are giving your heart to Jesus genuinely and sincerely for the first time. Some of you, I presume you're rededicating your, your life. Please let it be sincere from your heart. No playing games. Let it be sincere from your heart. Young and old, I honor and I salute you. I truly appreciate you for the courage to come out. Those in the overflows, thank you. Following online from whatever nation, we're about to make the altar call. I'd like you to be part of it right now. You're following in your home, your office, your device. Please participate right now. I want to plead with all of you who are in front. Can you lift your right hand as high, high above your head to the heavens? Jesus is here. I'm about to lead you to pray a prayer and I want you to pray it sincerely. A miracle happens when we pray. A miracle happens when we pray. More so when we pray in faith. Please say after me loud and clear, inside, outside. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need your life your presence, your glory. I repent of my sin. I declare that I do not have the power to save or help myself, but I believe in Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for my sin, that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I ask you to come into my heart. Be my savior, my Lord, and my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from today and forever i am a child of god please keep your hands lifted father thank you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the lord is giving you a new beginning Please help two of them. The power of God is coming on two of them right now. There are two people just here. I don't know. I just saw that in my vision. Among those who are out here, two of them, I just saw the power of God coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this experience will launch you into a new season. Not, not, not just that woman. There are two independent people aside from her. The power of God is coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that the Lord himself will use you mightily. You will experience his grace supernaturally. And I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Let this be the beginning of a new season in your life. A season of fire, a season of passion in the name of Jesus. That you will love him above and beyond anything that is in this life. Nothing should take his place in your life. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, um, I'm going to ask you, I presume, okay, what will happen is you return back to your seat rejoicing. If for any reason there is a call for those who have given their hearts to Jesus Christ, please do well to make yourself available. But before then, I'm seeing um, some counselors passing asleep. Do well to collect it before you go. Please be patient. Make sure you have the sleep. Can you lift it up? Let them see what it looks like. So uh -huh. you can pick one, just pass it. Make sure that you pick it. Go back to your seat. You can just fill it legibly and hand it over to any of the officers after the service. The Lord bless you and honor you. Please let's rise as I speak over your life. We have about five minutes and we're done for this morning. The message tonight, do not forget, is that God desires to tabernacle with men. He's proven that man has always and remains his obsession. From Genesis to Revelation, 
God's object, God's motivation is love. The object of that motivation is man. Above and beyond anything else, he desires man. He loves man. He's unashamed to declare his vulnerability towards man. But for him to tabernacle with man, there are conditions that must be met. Chiefest among them, as we've discussed tonight, is the heart condition. More than other spiritual principles that I'll be teaching you, the heart of man. And God granted us grace to look at the simple message through the life of David that a man can have that desire. Psalm 27. One thing have I desired. Let that be your desire. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The grace to hunger, the grace to love Jesus, the grace to passionately desire him and to seek him all the days of your life. I declare that that grace comes upon you now. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then I pray for you. Everything that fights that desire in your life, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a habit, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, here at this conference, we declare it broken forever. Any wrong association that fights that place of Jesus in your life, every wrong pursuit that attempts to fight that place in your life, in the name of Jesus, you are set free from such associations. And I pray for you. May the Lord reintroduce himself to you. In visions, in dreams, through scripture, may you have fresh encounters in the name of Jesus Christ. From now and all through this conference, I declare fresh encounters in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just, just a counsel in one or two minutes and then I'll be back to my seat. Let me give you an advice. All through the time of this conference, may I request advice and strongly suggest that you remain very spiritual. Minimize distractions. That means from here when you resort back to your homes, don't get distracted. You can go online. I believe the messages are available. Listen to it again and then do some study pray in the spirit see the 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 key to intimacy is time you must invest your time don't go back and just laugh around and be ready to come back tomorrow and you completely forget all that was done and you forget that you cried you forget that you were broken by the teaching go back and take god seriously wake up in the night if you can you should, as a matter of fact, you can wake up, even if it's just 30 minutes. Lord, I desire you, play worship. Just let your atmosphere be saturated by worship and you just pray and express your desire. I love you. Plant in me that desire of David. Read that psalm again and take God seriously and watch what begins to happen to you. Especially if you are a minister of the gospel or you are one who has seen that the call of God is upon your life. It will not be without this sacrifice. It shouldn't be surprising to you because it is a sacrifice. I pray for you, the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Many of you, before tomorrow morning, you will return with testimonies of this presence. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. In Jesus' name.